Uh, what are your thoughts on different notebook bindings and their pros and cons? Okay, so I've used a lot of different ones, but not all of them. I'll show you some of my personal preferences. This is just my personal preferences, maybe with some pros and cons, and a lot of it's based on stuff that I sell because those are the binding types that I'm most familiar with. I haven't used a lot of really radical different bindings than what I have here, but there certainly could be some out there, so it's not the most exhaustive resource, but it will hopefully at least give you something to think about. Um, first one I have is staple bound. So you can get top staple bound, side staple bound. This would include something like a, you know, Rhodia pad where it's like staple bound and it's really meant to be torn off like to-do list style. Um, that's usually what more what you're going to see in a top staple bound. And a side staple bound, you can get something like this field notes here, which I pulled out the snow blind because I wanted to go a little deep for you all who are um, avid fans. And uh, now I'm having a difficult time getting it out of the sleeve. Um, I hang on to like every field notes edition that comes out. This is the one that uh, will actually, oh my gosh, it's like sticking to itself. Oh no, please don't be a problem. Okay, there we go. We're good. It's a little nerve-wracking there. I was like, is this thing going to come apart? Um, so this is the one that like turns blue when you get it out into the sun. It's pretty cool. But it's a, um, it's a staple bound, so it has the staples um, that are stapled right through. It's just one signature of paper in the middle, stapled in the middle. Um, so the pros for staple bound notebooks in general is it's usually pretty economical because it's not a very elaborate binding type. So usually you get more bang for the buck for the paper. Um, it's more versatile because you can, you know, do it in a lot of different configurations here. You can get different sizes, you can get really small, you can get really big. Um, and the, you know, the way that you use it, I find it to be pretty versatile. Like you can get it really thin and you can keep it in your pocket. That's kind of what I mean by versatile. Um, and uh, usually it's pretty flexible, like the covers and stuff that you're going to have with staple bounds are going to be uh, much more flexible. So it's, it's, for me, it's a little more comfortable for carrying around. I carry something like this around in my pocket all the time, and it's not very obtrusive. It just kind of feels like an extension of like my wallet maybe. A um, little more practical than carrying around like a hardcover notebook, right, um, in, ter in terms of that. Um, Cons would be that, uh, well, being more flexible, it's slightly less durable, um, you could argue. It um, can be, for the top bound ones, you really can't use the back very easily. So you can use the front of the page, but then when it comes to the back, you know, you can like flip it over and kind of use part of the back, or you can tear it off and use the back, but then it's really kind of meant to be tossed a little bit more. So that's, a, you know, a con for some folks. Um, and then you can only get but so thick with it. You know, when you do the top staple bound like this and it's just a staple going straight through, you can get it fairly thick. But um, especially the, the little notebooks because um, the ones that are wrapped over and then stapled through the side, um, you can really only get but so thick because otherwise those staples aren't going to hold very well. So that's kind of a drawback as well. They're generally going to be thinner notebooks. Or maybe that's a plus for you. I don't know. Um, next one I wanted to talk about was wire bounds. Wire bounds are a really preferential thing. Um, wire bounds, kind of like staple bounds, are a more economical form of binding, so you can get a little more bang for your buck um, with your paper if you're getting wire bound notebooks. Um, think about like those Mead, like, you know, five star notebooks that you had, like the single subject notebooks were, you know, always wire bound and whatnot. Um, you can get those in a top wire bound, you know, reporter style or a side wire bound just like you can do with the staple bound ones. Um, the better quality paper is usually gonna have um, the double wire ring because they're a little more durable. So pros is that it's economical. The sheets can be easily removed. If they're not micro perforated already, you can do the thing where you just rip out you know, the sheet and usually get the little dangly things that come on there, but you just kind of tear those off. It's not a huge deal, but um, you can remove those sheets. A lot more difficult to do that in a bound journal like that, unless it has perforated pages. Um, it's really easy to use both sides. It lays really flat as well, so I like that a lot. Um, the cons is that the binding is thicker than the notebook. Even when it's closed, it's going to be thicker. Um, that kind of is inevitable. Um, and then when you have it in the middle and you're trying to write on the opposite side, you know, if you're if you're writing on the left page, you know, the binding can can feel weird on your right hand or the right hand is on the other side. So that might annoy you. That's probably the number one reason I hear that people don't like the wire bounds is they don't like the way that their hand feels on it when they're trying to write on the opposite side page. 
Um, you know, and then these, these double wire bound ones really do hold up pretty well, but certainly even they are subject to getting bent or damaged and making it harder, and then your, pa your paper could like come off and it could just be, excuse me, just be a little bit frustrating. So you gotta take that into account. Um, and then just maybe somewhat less durable, like they're usually not thick covers, they're the flimsy covers, kind of like the staple bound ones. So it's, it's something to think about there. Um, next one I have is glued binding. Um, so this I'm, I'm really referring to like a stationary tablet, like the Clairefontaine Triumph or like the Tomoe uh, River or Jila Lo or Crown Mill. Um, you know, it's just got a glued binding at the top. So it's really meant to be where you write something and then you tear off a sheet like that. So it's really easy to tear off. Um, I'm gonna save that paper because I just tore off a fresh clean sheet. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of what the glue binding is all about. So the advantages of that one would be, you know, it's obviously very easy to tear it off for things like stationary, it gives a nice clean edge as opposed to like a wire bound or something like that. Um, the disadvantage of it is it's really not meant to be carried around. Like you can slide this inside a backpack or something, but you're not gonna carry a Triumph pad and take notes on it and stuff like that. The top staple bound is gonna be a little better for that than this well. This is really meant to be like used, you tear off a sheet and then you mail it kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of, that's taken into account. Um, next one I have is stitched, which um, this gets a little confusing because you get stitch binding and then you can, you can combine this with a lot of other things that I'm talking about here. So I'm gonna talk about stitched more as a component of it. You really generally don't have stitched as kind of its own classification. Um, but, um, you know, for example, I have this old school Clairefontaine uh, Basic, which I think they've actually changed the bindings on these now to be just glued and not stitched and glued. Um, but in some versions of the notebooks, well, let me see if I can pull out one that, um, I do actually carry now, like a Leuchtturm, for example. This is a Leuchtturm bullet journal. And if I open it up, the way that you can tell that it's stitched is you can see when you're looking at the binding that there's like these little, you know, kind of groupings. They're called signatures. Um, and you can see where they are. And in the middle of each signature is a stitching. And I'm gonna try to get to the middle of it so I can maybe show you where it is. You can see there's like little, you know, every, every three quarters of an inch or so, there's, there it is. Okay, so I'm in the middle of a signature now, and I'm gonna see if I can show you where, yeah, you can see them. Like, there's a thread, there's a thread, there's a thread, there's a thread, there's a thread. So that's stitching. So that is gonna be a little more durable. So it's gonna hold in better. And the nice thing about this is you can group a whole bunch of these signatures together, and you can make a thicker notebook than you can in just a regular staple bound. What I do? Oh, then just like a regular staple bound. Like this, granted there's three of them in one pack, but that's about as thick as you can get with this. You can go a little bit thicker, but it becomes more unstable the more you try to staple through. But this one, I can group a whole bunch of signatures together and I can get a much thicker notebook. So that is um, the advantage of having it stitched, added durability. Um, the disadvantage of having stitched um, pages is that um, depending on how it's done, it can be more difficult for it to lay flat. Um, because you're dealing with a thicker notebook generally, um, it also uh, increases your cost. So you're pretty much always gonna pay more for a, like a bound journal that has a stitch group like this than you would a staple bound or wire bound. Um, kind of the same thing with cloth bound. So I have, um, you know, this is a stitched and glued uh, cloth bound. This is an old version of it. I believe Clairefontaine now, I should go back and look. Uh, these days, but um, our website should be accurate. I just, I'm getting like cloudy because we've been carrying these for so many years. I'm like, do they still do it? I remember they changed over the rec the classic ones, but not the basic. So I need to refresh myself a little bit, but either way you get the concept is that you get that kind of stitched and glued binding, but then it has this cloth edge, which kind of reinforces. So we, it's a flimsier cover, you know, it's a cardboard cover. It's not a hard cover like this Leuchtturm here. Um, and in order to reinforce the binding, you can have a cloth wrapping on it. You can also have like, for example, on the Apica Premium has it as well. Um, it's not quite a cloth. It's like more of a tape reinforced. Um, but this one is, uh, I believe this is, yeah, this is stitched and glued as well, um, I can tell. And it's, uh, it also has kind of that reinforced binding because it's got the flimsy cover. So that's just another way that it's done. 
Um, you know, the advantages of that is it's it's fairly economical, a little more economical, especially on the cover side, um, than a hardcover journal like this. So a little economical, not quite as durable. Um, you see where the trade-off is clearly showing up on all of these things. Um, and then the last one, second to last one, uh, I have is the hardcover, like this Leuchtturm here, Rodia Web Notebook, Quobatis Habana, all these sorts of things um, have a hardcover. And um, usually you'll see stitched and glued bindings in these because maximum durability and longevity is key because these things are going to get abused and taken around and traveled with. Um, and so that's the advantage is they're usually pretty durable. Um, you usually get some kind of bookmarker that goes with it, maybe a back pocket to it as well, an elastic strap. You're usually getting some additional features. There's your uh, back pocket so you can put stuff in it. So the added durability really adds to the functionality of it. Uh, the disadvantage would be cost. Cost goes up. So you're paying more in the $20 to $25 neighborhood for something like this, whereas a Rodia pad like this is, you know, $550. So um, you're going up and up and up in cost depending on the durability and how long you want it to last. And then the last thing, which isn't really a binding type, but I just included it anyway, is loose sheets. Um, it's pretty obvious. Loose sheets are probably the most economical because there's no additional binding you're paying for. Um, but the disadvantage is that you can't really carry them anywhere unless they're like in a packaging of some kind or something else. So um, again, continues with the theme of trade-off for durability versatility with cost. And that pretty much explains my take on different paper rulings. My preference uh, is that... Um, I like all of them for different purposes. I really end up using three primarily. I will carry around a small staple bound with me um, on my person at all times pretty much. Um, I use the top staple bounds a lot um, for like taking notes at my desk and, and writing quick grocery list items and stuff. I do use the hard covers for, for like my actual journals and things I want to store for a long time. And, uh, and then I'll just, uh, right now I'm using a wire-bound um, Nemesign. You know, I'm kind of tearing through this uh, just as my regular take notes at meetings kind of book. Um, and I am, I'm actually not as far through it as I thought, but I'm this much through it already. So I'm, you know, probably three quarters. Um, so I'll kind of fill that up and then switch to something else. So I've used wire bounds before and they tend to be fairly practical, um, you know, but uh, I'll probably switch it up to something different after that, but you know, I would say if, if price were no object, for me, the hardcover I like the best because you can kind of take everything with you, but I really like being able to tear off sheets like this. So I don't know, I kind of use a blend.